There's so much software out there. What is critical to your career as a live audio engineer? What should you learn? What should you have? Which one should you use? Well, today I'm gonna to share with you the 12 buckets of software that I use that help me prepare for shows, get results on shows, clean up audio, anything that can make anything sound better for a show, I'm gonna share with you today. So we're gonna have 12 audio buckets today, and then I'll give you the specific applications within those buckets that I use. I'm not saying that there's other software out there that can do it just as well. I'm just gonna share you with my story, my experience of what I use, but what I want you to take away from today is that you should have at least something in each of these 12 buckets that could help you make things sound better on your shows. Because you want things to sound great, you wanna get called back, you wanna get more gigs, so having and being fluent with all this software is really helpful to you in your career. Something else I think would be really helpful to you is my audio math survival spreadsheet. I want you to be able to stop guessing when you're designing and taking measurements in the field. You do that with math, but instead of having to look up all these different calculations all over the place, I've compiled them for you all right here, being able to figure out phase delay. So that helps you align mains and subs. If you want to understand decibels a little bit better, you can put this in here and start to compare those numbers, like a starting value of 10 to 20, that's a doubling, so that's a 6 dB change when we're talking about voltage. Anyway, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in here. I hope you check it out, help you plan line arrays better, help you make better sounding sub arrays. Check that out at the link below, produced by nkc.com slash audio toolkit. I hope you will snag that and you will enjoy it. Okay, let's jump right into the 12 essential audio app buckets that you gotta have to make sure your shows sound great. First up out of our 12 buckets of audio apps that you absolutely gotta have is our two channel audio analyzer. Right here I have Open Sound Meter. It is an open source, pay what you want piece of software that you can download today in full functionality and start getting results. You can capture audio data like you see here, be able to see graphs and make decisions about what's going on with your sound system and get meaningful results quickly. Another software that's very popular is called Smart by Rational Acoustics. I own and use it as well, it's fantastic. But if you're a beginner or just starting out, I think Open Sound Meter, not only from a cost perspective, but just a simplicity perspective, is a fantastic place to start. So that's number one. On deck, we have a loudness meter. This is the Ulean Loudness Meter, meter 2, and it is available as a free version with a more limited parameters that you can adjust. I have the pro version here, I think it's 60 bucks. But what a loudness meter helps you do is to measure the program audio loudness of your broadcast mix. And that is critically important to make sure you're at the right level for any standard that you're mixing for. For radio, is this going to YouTube? Is this a Facebook Live? Is this a plain old recording? You need to make sure your levels are staying in check. So make sure and snag this one. It monitors the input of a source. So what it cannot do, if you can open up a Spotify right now and start playing music, it's not gonna react but you need to set up an input. So set up the digital output of your console into your computer, host this plugin um, as the standalone app. It can also run in your DAW, and so you have other metering plugins running as well. It can also do a really handy thing where you click here, import a file, and it will show you this graph here and see how you did. So take a recent recording of yours, upload it in here, and see if you stay to the certain loudness standard that you're going after. That is the Ulean loudness meter. Download that, get the free version, and roll. Number three piece of software you gotta have is a console file editor. You don't always have the opportunity to sit in front of a desk and make decisions and you have to build ahead of time. I really like wrapping my head around my routing scheme, my console file flow if I'm working on one that I'm, familiar with, um, I'm not familiar with, so make sure and download that. Right here I have M32 edit, I was just on an M32 today, so it was on my brain. I also have the CL editor, since I'm on the Yamaha CL5, CL3 a whole lot, also the QL. So being able to open up the software, plan a file ahead of time, get used to it, it's critical to make sure you are prepared for the shows that you're on. Number four is a music catalog and DJ playback software. You're not often specced as the DJ on a show, but sometimes if you're the audio human, you're expected to be able to pull out songs out of your back pocket. So you need a software service like Spotify or Apple Music or Tidal to be able to make that happen. My go-to is Spotify. It's what I pay for and use and able to have access to songs on the fly and make it happen. Of course, you gotta be careful if you're streaming somewhere and make sure what you have is royalty free if it's going out 
to the whole world. Uh, you need to talk with your production manager about that. But if you just need walking music and that kind of stuff, I use Spotify and be able to make playlists for my clients and make sure that the vibe is set well. I also have my reference playlist here, which is also available in my audio toolkit. And these are the songs that I have and play through a system that I know really well that I like to reference and make sure my system is doing what it's supposed to do. Number five, we have audio prediction software to make sure our sound system is gonna do what we want before we show up to the show. We need to be able to have good results and predictions so we're not showing up empty handed and guessing when we're on site when the riggers are already waiting on us to get a PA in the air. I think a fantastic app to learn in is Map3D. This is by Meyer Sound and only has Meyer products, but I think it's the best designed one out of any manufacturer out there. It's just great to learn on. You get the built-in processor, so you can mess with that. You can put microphones out there and get measurements. You can have all sorts of different kinds of PAs, different size. This latest version, at least on my M1, is just a little bit buggy, but I can get over it. Uh, before this was Map XT, and it was a 2D version. Now we have Map 3D. I recommend that you also learn at least Ease Focus 3. It is PC only, so I'm running it on Parallels, which is how I can run Windows on a Mac machine. And so this is a design I did for a recent graduation that I ran Sound 4 last week. You're just seeing here the PA right, but you're able to design a system in Ease Focus 3, and it uses files called GLLs. They're called System Definition Files, and manufacturers like QSC, RCF, I think, EV, it's just kind of a common format that you can put speakers in and take data and then shove it into the software. And so you can mix and match different manufacturer types. There's some things that are bummers about it that you can only get one octave resolution on the weighting, but all in all, it still can do a whole lot for you and give you great data in the field uh, and get hope. make sure you are prepared for the shows that you're showing up for. So that's Map3D and Ease Focus 3 or the two production softwares I'm using the most. I would also recommend that if you're in a neck of the woods where there's a certain manufacturer that's very popular, let's say it's L Acoustics, definitely learn Sound Vision. Or if you are in a, in a place that uses D&B rigs a lot, make sure and learn Array Calc. I think that's their software name. Anyway, so just do your research and if a certain sound company around you uses a specific brand a lot, get to know that. But I think to get off the ground, please learn Map 3D and Ease Focus 3. You'll get a lot of mileage out of those. Number six is our audio cue playback system. Right here I have Farago by Rogue Amoeba Software. Another popular one is QLab. So what this does for you is I'm able to load a bunch of audio files in and I can map them to my keyboard or I can put them in list mode and simply play them and go. Because sometimes you have a bunch of VOGs or voice of God announcements like, and now ladies and gentlemen, welcome John, Miss John Smith to the stage or there's music bumpers. So just a bunch of cues that you have them all in order. So you're not having to drag them into iTunes, scrub around and search around to hit play. You can have them right here, set the in and out points, set the levels, put notes beside them. This is the cue numbers I have for this specific show that I'm on tomorrow. So I'm able to hit enter and just simply move down the list and make it easy on myself for audio playback. That again, that's Farago by Rogue Amoeba Software. You can also check out QLab. Number seven is a multi-track recording software. Being able to take the digital out of your console, some direct outs, maybe directly off the preamp on your stage rack, whatever, patch this all into your multi-track recorder and be able to have kick, snare, hat, everything coming in. That makes it easy to be able to have virtual sound check later so you can pipe it right back out, right back out into your console. This is also great if you wanna practice mixing, being able to multi-track your show, get back at home on headphones or in your own studio at home and, and slow down and practice EQ, practice compression, making stuff sound good. Then you'll be able to translate the results next time you're on a live show and make it sound even better. It's also great to have this if you're recording voiceovers, especially if you're on corporate shows, you might have talent show up last minute. And just like we talk about audio cue playback software in Farago, you need to have voiceovers and voice of God announcements to play. So I've been asked last minute to, hey, go, go back in this, you know, hotel room with the client set up a recording rig, record some voiceovers, throw it in an audio editor, 
you know, slice it up, make it sound good and have it ready for the show that night. And so this is Reaper. It's what I use. It's $60 for a personal license. I think it's $260 for a commercial license. You can also use something like Audacity. That's free as well. Anything that can record multi-track audio into it is going to work. Logic, Cubase, Reason, all of them will do the trick. Number eight is an audio editor. One I didn't mention earlier was Waves Tracks Live that is strictly a audio recording software that you export out the stems and drag it into an editor that can actually make trims and fades, adjust volumes, apply effects, that type of thing. So again, that's Reaper for me. So you can have a separate recording software. Some people like specific ones because they're ultra stable. I think Reaper is, or they might be comfortable with something else and faster when they're editing and actually mixing and getting into that flow. I know Logic is becoming very popular these days if you have a Mac. So anything that's going to work, they all sound great. It's up to you and your own specific workflow. Just make sure you can edit audio and get it spit back out on a show for something that's recorded. Number nine is audio coordination software. Here I've got Wireless Workbench by Sure. So I'm able to import all these frequencies or get them on the network, bring them over here and run some calculations on them. Here are my primary frequencies. I need to make sure that the scans I do in the area or the frequencies I've chosen or calculated all match up and make sense. So this helps me make sure I'm not harming myself with my wireless, making sure my frequencies are gonna stay well. It helps me monitor. I'm not attached to the network now, so I can't see it, but if I had all these RF units on my network, I'd be able to see their levels, their battery, their transmitter status, all sorts of things. So getting comfortable with this type of software is wonderful. I understand there's more manufacturers out there besides Sure, there's Sennheiser, there's AKG, there's Electrosonics. All of them have their own proprietary software that they can use with their products. But you can also import stuff that's outside of the Sure product range with this software. Uh, I'm not sure if you can monitor it or not, but you can at least import the device and the band and it will give you a frequency that you can dish out to that device. So this is what I use all the time since I'm using Sure Wireless, usually the ULXD or the Accident series. It's great stuff to so make sure you get Wireless Workbench by Sure. Number 10 is a patch sheet editor. So I've got Google Sheets here. You can use Excel, you can use Notion, you can use Airtable, whatever you want. Just make sure you have an easy way to be able to chart out your IO and then also easily share it with someone else. So if you're an A1 on a show, you're usually worried about the PA, making sure outputs are there. But you may be responsible for working with the band and planning all of it and you have an A2 show up, they're gonna be patching the stage for you. So being able to have an easy to read, well laid out IO sheet is key to make that happen. So this is the show I'm on tomorrow. These are the sources I have. This template for the X32 and M32 is also available in my audio toolkit at the link below or produced by mkc.com slash audio toolkit. And you can put that to work for you. Yeah, so it feels obvious, just but be able to have this. The back of the napkin doesn't always work. It gets a little bit more complicated. So having a easy to read patch sheet makes everyone's lives easier and makes you work faster. Lastly is getting comfortable with some sort of audio over IP and control software. For some reason, Dante Controller isn't launching for me right now, but this is Dante Virtual Sound Card. This makes my computer able to use its audio output and spit it out if I'm on the network over to a Dante network, which means I have audio over the internet protocol, which is super cool. So let's me capture or playback audio to any other device on the network. There's AVB, there's similar stuff, Matty, you know, just being able to get comfortable with this type of workflow is really helpful. I wish I could show you Dante controller today. It's not launching. I gotta probably reinstall it. But anyway, it's it helps me route audio where I need it in the digital audio domain. Dante Audinate. The, who makes Dante has levels of certifications. So you can get Dante level one, two, and three. They're really well done. I highly recommend you take those courses and get more familiar with audio over IP. All right, here's number 12, our bonus round. Here's, here's a lightning round of five other, a little bit more niche pieces of software, but I think will still be helpful for you. First up is Descript. It can do transcription. So sometimes the client might ask the, you know, the audio person, hey, did you record that? I need this turned around to be able to read it. So Descript does much more than that. I use it as a video editor for the video that you're watching right now. So here's a little bit of inception, but you're able to upload video or audio files and does a really good job of transcribing. You can add chapter markers. You can publish the web page for review. Just a really handy utility piece of software. Next would be audio cleanup. This is Isotope RX9. I can open an audio file. Let's open up this recent track that I 
did for a client and I can make edits here. This has fantastic tools for cleanup. So move, removing mouth ticks for removing the background noise from a room. So if you're recording the VOGs that we talked about earlier, I've had to do it in the middle of a fort, you know, it was a Corolla. Yeah. I had to bring in a, uh, USB audio interface that got power from my computer, drag in a 58, have the guy hold a 58 in his driver's seat and read the videos from a laptop and make it all happen. So I was able to use this software to help clean things up and make it sound better. You can check that out. I am an RX advanced. You can get the basics version or get the plugins, but it's really helpful to make dialogue sound cleaner and better. You also need a audio system recorder. So what this does, I'm using Audio Hijack by Rogue Amoeba Software. I can take the output of Spotify and record it. I don't do this to steal music, but on the show I was on today, they needed a cue I needed to load into Farago of a certain track. And I could only find it on Spotify, I couldn't find it anywhere else. So I played the output from Spotify, recorded it locally, then loaded it into Farago so I didn't have to rely on the internet or my Spotify connection to make sure that cue was hit on time. Lastly, in our lightning ground, we have Sound Source. This runs in your system tray and you're able to host plugins. So here I have Ulean Loudness 2, and this is how I can cheat and have audio playing back and be able to have a plugin here. I also have the Tonal Balance Control 2 plugin, which is a slowly weighted RTA. I have the Good Hertz Can Opener Studio plugin, which helps provide some crossfeed on headphones and make sure it's not sounding too much like on my headphones. It kind of sounds like it's on speakers. I have headphone and room calibration software hosted here and have a dither plugin. So sound source, I can do a few other trick bells and whistles, but the main thing I use it for is to host plugins here on my system output. So I'm not having to switch around and do it in the DAW or do without it if I'm not within my DAW. That's all 12. Make sure and download those, take them for a test spin. Almost every single one of them have a free trial version. What I want to let you know below is what apps are you using that I've missed? Is there a specific niche one in one of those categories that I don't know about or am I missing a bucket? Please let me know below. Make sure and grab the audio toolkit I mentioned at the top at the link below or at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next week.